I think we can all agree that 3D printing is an absolutely amazing technology. And as much as I love working on the machines and upgrading them and seeing their advancements over the years, it was actually the possibilities of what I could do and what I could create with a 3D printer that drove me to purchase my first machine in 2014. Now we do quite a bit of 3D printing on this channel, but I made it a goal of mine in 2022 to look for some larger projects that I could work on or that I could create using 3D printers more specifically in the functional 3D printing realm. And just this past week, I finished one of those projects. My goal of these projects is to push my own knowledge, show some very cool applications for 3D printing, and hopefully inspire some of you to take on some larger projects of your own. Today, we're looking at a 3D printed camera jib designed by Mechanistic, which is the largest print project I believe I've done to date, coming in at just add three full kilograms of PETG filament. It is also the most expensive pack of models or STLs that I've purchased at $39. In today's video, we will talk a bit about the printing as well as the build, why I chose this specific project, 3D printed products sort of as a whole and why it made more sense in this case to print a 3D printed or to print a camera jib instead of just going out and buying one. So with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right into today's video.
As someone that has been making videos on YouTube on and off for close to a decade now, I'm always looking at additional ways to make the content more exciting, more engaging, get cool shots, and work on different projects. And in October of last year, I launched the ModBot Army channel where we have been doing a live stream every single Wednesday, either doing an unboxing, working on upgrading a 3D printer, or showing off some sort of project. And it has been a ton of fun and super rewarding, but it's also come with its own set of challenges as there's a lot more moving pieces when you are doing something live with multiple cameras versus something that you can film and then edit and crop out different things as you need. One day I was searching online on ways that I can get different angles with my camera for showing off some of the live builds that I'm doing when I came across a camera jib. And a camera jib is essentially like a crane or almost like a seesaw with a counterweight that allows you to extend a camera up above a certain area and sort of control it in a bunch of different ways on various axes and it looked amazing. It looked like the perfect solution for what I wanted to do. However, there were two main issues. The first one is they're pretty expensive. On the very, very low end, they're at least a few hundred dollars while most of them are thousand or thousands of dollars, which is a lot of money. And on top of that, most of them are very large and they take up a full tripod. You mount them on top of a tripod and if there's one thing I complain about a lot in this little area, it is that I just don't have the space. So using one of the off the shelf options is just and was out of the question. However, while I was doing searching for all of these various camera jibs, I came across this tabletop 3D printed jib and it looked perfect. I actually laughed pretty hard when I watched this video because in the intro, it shows him trying to get a bunch of different shots using a small gorilla pod tripod, which is the exact same one that I've been using on my live streams and I've had a frustrating time trying to show exactly what I want. So within that first 30 seconds, I was nearly hooked because I saw the exact situation I was dealing with and the solution for what I was trying to get to. Clicking on the link in the description of his video, it took me over to my mini factory where I was greeted with the add to cart option and a $39 price point, which Gave me a pause for a moment. I have been 3D printing for a long time and myself, like many others, have gotten used to free models on Thingiverse or used to be Thingiverse, but now the other platforms that are available and usually the premium models that I go with are a Patreon uh, creator that has sort of the Patreon that you pay monthly, you get access to their models, and there's been the occasional one-off model off my mini factory or Colts or whatever that I have purchased. But this was a bit more than the $10-ish price point I had been used to spending for a large model. However, it only took me a few moments to look at the project, see the amount of time and effort that went into both the design, their prototyping, as well as a very detailed PDF where I knew that, yes, it is absolutely worth at least this much. And as someone that doesn't have a background in 3D modeling, I'd never touched a CAD program prior to me getting my first 3D printer, I can spend many, many hours designing a fairly simple functional part and so I can only imagine the amount of time that went into this. This may actually be a very good topic for a separate video. While we are on the topic of this model and this artist mechanistic, I did want to take a moment to highlight this creator. You may have seen his work over on Breaks and Makes channel. He made a absolutely insane mechanical clock or watch that is probably one of the most intricate designs I have ever seen 3D printed and I say that in all seriousness, if you haven't seen that, I can place links down below in the description. And he also has a, a current campaign going on for a small working 3D printed piano that again is just absolutely mind blowing. So if you are looking for just next level crazy projects to print, definitely check out his work. And he also has a YouTube channel. I'll place all that in the description of this video. As far as the actual build goes, all of the three kilograms of PETG were printed on the Prusa MK3S Plus that we also built over on the ModBot Army channel on live stream. The main purpose for that was that I really wanted to stress test this machine and just see how much of a workhorse it was. And it printed out all of these parts like an absolute champ. All of the filament was printed in Jesse's filament from Printed Solid, which has become one of my absolute favorite brands of filament. And aside from that, you will need some M4 bolts, M6 bolts, M6 nuts, some very large bearings, and a couple of metal pins. I think that all in all, the price point, not including the price of the model itself, was around $100, depending on if you shop around or if you go with less expensive filament. I think that printed solid filament is very fair for the fact that it's made here in the States, but you definitely could get that price down a bit more. 
The build itself was fairly straightforward thanks to the absolutely amazing PDF that covers everything from print parameters for certain parts that need to be, because you can do PLA for a lot of these parts, but certain ones that they recommend to have PETG or certain ones that need to have a higher load or really tight tolerances. There is just everything has been meticulously thought out. And the only hiccup I ran into was in the bomb, you need to get some of these three millimeter pins. And the link that I clicked on in that bomb took me to a one and a half millimeter pin that I ordered without double checking. So I did have to place an order for that, but with everything being said and done, I would say it was roughly an evening, so maybe three-ish hours, give or take, depending on how quick you go. When this video goes live, we will have started to build the Voron Switchfire on the ModBot Army channel, and I am very excited to use this jib to try to get some awesome shots that I wasn't able to get when we built the Voron 0.1. And what I love about this project is that 3D printing really made this accessible. Like I said, even including all the hardware costs as well as the files itself, we'll just round up and say it was around $150. There was nothing out there that I saw that compared to this that I would have been able to get for the price point. And the fact that it fits on my tabletop is just absolutely perfect for my application. The other cool thing is you get the option to customize it as far as do you want a certain color theme? I personally think that it turned out awesome using the green and Galaxy Silver, I believe it was called from Printed Solid. And if there is anything down the road that ends up breaking on it, I've got the STL files, I can easily replace it. And all of the other parts, like I said, are just off the shelf components that are super easy to source. Functional 3D printing is one of my absolute favorite use cases for 3D printing. I love printing knickknacks and doodads, but when I can print something that actually makes something I normally do better, that is just to me something incredibly powerful. And so I will place links down below in the description, like I said, to this design and all of the stuff about the uh, mechanistic content creator. So you can check out his other models as well as his content. And let me know in the comments down below what your absolute favorite functional part is that you've printed. I've seen so many cool things from repairing broken things around the house to certain organizers. And I'd love to know what you think in the comments down below. Also, let me know what your thoughts are on these project style videos. I have another one coming up in roughly a month or two that I am very, very excited for. So I hope that you guys are all enjoying this video and this style of video. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll place links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.